living below your means is an unappealing lifestyle, one filled with endless sacrifices and missed opportunities. That's what I hear some people say. For me, it allowed me to begin my retirement journey in my 40s. So in this video, I'm going to show you how living below your means can not only save your wallet, but also enrich your life in ways you never imagined. So what does living below your means really mean? And how can it bring you lasting happiness? Well, we'll explore some of the steps that you could take, whether you're on a low income or just struggling to find financial stability to create a life that's not only financially stable, but also fulfilling. And stick around by the end of this video, you'll discover that living below your means is not about deprivation, but about freedom. Living below your means is a simple concept, yet one often misunderstood. Living below your means is about spending less than you earn, plain and simple, but more importantly, it's about prioritizing what truly matters to you. It's about saying no to the things that do not align with your values and yes to the things that do. Now, many people assume living this way is about making sacrifices. The truth is, when done right, it's the opposite. It's about aligning your spending with your goals and finding contentment with what you have. Warren Buffett once said, if you buy things you do not need, soon you will have to sell things you need. Everywhere we turn, we're bombarded with messages telling us that happiness is just one purchase away. The latest gadgets, the trendy clothes, the most exotic vacations, they all promise fulfillment, but at what cost? Now, this culture of consumerism feeds on our insecurities, convincing us that we need more to be more. But the reality is chasing after every new thing only leads to more stress and less satisfaction. As writer Joshua Becker puts it in his book, The More of Less, excessive consumption leads to greater stress, heavier debt, more environmental harm, and increased time spent maintaining possessions, none of which makes us happier. When you choose to live below your means, you're not just cutting back, but you're taking control. You're freeing yourself from the shackles of debt and from the constant worry about making ends meet and from the pressure to keep up with others. Financial freedom doesn't mean you have to earn a six-figure salary. It's about making the most of what you have, no matter how much or how little that may be. For example, focusing on building an emergency fund, paying off high interest debt, investing wisely. These are steps everyone can take towards securing their financial future. By living below your means, you can build a financial cushion that provides peace of mind. Does any of this make sense to you? If it does, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. If not, let me know why in the comments below. Now that you know the why, let's dive into the how. Here are some actionable steps you could take to start living below your means today. Know where your money is going. A budget is like a roadmap. It shows you where you are and where you need to go. Start by tracking your income and expenses for a month. Then categorize your spending and identify areas where you can cut back. Remember, the goal isn't to restrict yourself, it's to spend with intention. Identify what you can live without. Do you really need that daily latte? Could you cancel that subscription service you rarely use? Small changes add up to big savings over time. Focus on your needs first, housing, food, utilities, then allocate money towards your financial goals, such as savings or paying off debt. Once those are covered, you can decide how much you wanna spend on your wants. This approach helps you avoid lifestyle inflation where your expenses increase as your income does. Set up automatic transfers to your savings account each payday. This way, you're paying yourself first and making savings a priority, not as an afterthought. Consider adopting a minimalist approach. Minimalism isn't about living with nothing. It's about living with what you need and what brings you joy. By decluttering your life, both physically and financially, you can focus on what truly matters. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, Housing costs account for nearly 33% of the average American household expense. Housing is often the largest expense for most people, but it doesn't have to be. Consider downsizing to a smaller home, renting out a portion of your property, or even moving to a more affordable area. If you're renting, negotiate your lease or explore cheaper rental options. Dining out can be a huge drain on your finances. By cooking at home, you can save money, eat healthier, and even enjoy the process of preparing meals. 
Meal planning and bulk buying are great ways to reduce food costs even further. Switching to cash or debit for daily expenses can help you avoid the temptation of overspending. It forces you to stick to a budget and prevents accumulating high interest debt on credit cards. Instead of splurging on a new or luxury vehicle, opt for a reliable, fuel-efficient car that meets your needs. Not only will you save on the purchase price, but you'll also reduce fuel and maintenance costs over time. Impulse buying can quickly derail your financial plans. Implement a 24-hour rule. If you see something you want to buy, wait 24 hours before making the purchase. Often the urge will pass and you'll save money on unnecessary items. Subscription services can quietly drain your bank account over time. Take an inventory of all your subscriptions, streaming services, magazines, apps, and cancel the ones you no longer use or can live without. If you live in an area with reliable public transportation, consider using it to save on gas, parking, and vehicle maintenance. Carpooling with coworkers or friends can also significantly reduce your transportation costs. Doing it yourself can save a lot of money, whether it's home repairs, gardening, or even making gifts. Plus, it's a great way to learn new skills and you get a sense of accomplishment. Shopping secondhand is not only cost effective, but also environmentally friendly. Thrift stores, consignment shops, and online marketplaces offer great deals on gently used items. When you do make a purchase, prioritize quality over quantity. Investing in durable, high quality items may cost more upfront, but it saves you more in the long run by reducing the need for frequent replacements. Maximize your savings by taking advantage of cashback offers, reward programs, coupons. Just be careful not to overspend in pursuit of these rewards. Now, do you currently practice any of these strategies or any other strategy? Let me know in the comments below. I use many of these strategies to cut back and save. Then I use that extra money to pay off my debts. Once my debts were paid off, I had more disposable cash. I then used that disposable cash to invest in income producing assets that allowed me to begin my retirement journey in my 40s. Listen, if you're getting any value from this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more personal finance tips just like this. The benefit of living below your means are far reaching. You'll find that with less financial stress, you have more energy to focus on what truly makes you happy whether that's spending time with loved ones, pursuing hobbies, or simply enjoying life's simple pleasures. You'll also build financial security, giving you the freedom to take risks, pursue your passions, and even retire early. As the author Vicki Robbins says in her book, Your Money or Your Life, when you live frugally, you can work less, own your time, and have a life that's rich with experiences rather than things. Living below your means isn't about missing out. It's about so much more. It's about creating a life that's rich in experiences, relationships, and peace of mind. By taking control of your finances, you're not just saving money, but you're buying freedom. To start living below our means, we have to make sure that we're doing the right things, starting with reducing our debt. I share 10 tips to reduce your debt in the on-screen video, so click on that video and I'll see you there.